Nintendo is going uh, Nintendo to acquire thank you Thanks. animation studios uh, Dynamo Pictures to adapt games into movies. So Nintendo's making their way into video production now. So this one's into like movies. slightly that's depressing, but depressing nonetheless. Depressing why? Because I have yet to see a video game to movie adapta- adaptation that hasn't been insanely awful. Didn't you He's watch wrong. Sonic? Sonic is good. Sonic, Sonic 2 is better. Sonic 2 is good. Detective Pikachu is fine. Uh, Uncharted is nothing like the game, but in an age of like awful movies, Mark Wahlberg and Tom Holland together create a thoroughly inoffensive group of guys. So I actually think, it, they're, trust me, none of those movies that I just mentioned, they're not Assassin's Creed. And they're, you know what I'm saying? They're, they're not also, bad. Also, like, I understand this is not attached to a franchise and it's more conceptual, but, like, you said Free Guy Free, is oh, also yeah. really good. I mean, but that's just... Free Guy is yeah. It's not the same concept. Yeah, but it's, it's looking to incorporate uh, video games and But you should culture. definitely watch Sonic. Yes. Sonic was actually good. Okay, well, I'll, I'll go to fine. But, like, if, if <laughs> you're... If you're, like, really into games, like, the thing you want the most is that the thing that you love about the game to be like translated, but it's really hard to do that because which they're failing at right now. I don't know if anybody here. Uh, I was never. I didn't play Resident Evil growing up, but the the current video game adaptation of Resident Evil on Netflix, it, train wreck is not the word for it. It's actually like a slow motion like space shuttle wreck. Why is it so bad? Everyone hates it. Uh, I actually have an art. I, we weren't going to talk about it today, but it's basically it's just because it's nothing like the game. Uh, and I was like, I was like, well, this weekend, no, this this weekend, I go to like look at uh, to look at it on Netflix. I'm like, maybe I'll check out a few episodes. I know that the track record for Resident Evil getting adapted is really really bad. Yeah. Uh, and the first thing she says in the trailer is she goes, "I heard climate change in the first ten words." No way. And I'm just like, nope. What? No. Nope. Uh, they they <laughs> were talking about the methods in which the world was ending, and sh- like they listed climate change. I'm like, no. Who cares? I was like, you know what they need to do? It's like zombie Greta. No. Like, ah. I talk. <laughs> <laughs> what? No. Uh, it, it's just. So I I don't understand the complaint of it's nothing like the game because if you're adapting a video game into a TV show, uh, you're making it fundamentally not what the experience was, which is that you are involved and now you're not involved. Now you're passively. Yeah, but observing Jeremy, it Jeremy. rather than being involved in it directly. And I thought the whole appeal of like something like The Last of Us, for instance, is that you're controlling the storyline. You're making decisions. The original Resident Evil video games, particularly the first two, took much inspiration from the George A. Romero style zombies as seen in films like Night of the Living Dead and Dawn of the Dead, with the first game even taking place during a classic gothic setting of a spooky mansion. In fact, Romero even directed a commercial for Resident Evil 2 at one point, which to this day stands as perhaps the best live action adaptation of, of, the, of the games. But for, to, for whatever reason, most, if not all of the live action adaptations have eschewed the classic zombie feel of Romero, going instead for a more modern interpretation interpretation complete with heavy-handed use of subpar computer generated imagery much to the frustration of fans that would be annoying to me because yeah. i know mm-hmm. the walking dead stuck very heavily to makeup um with what they were doing wait do you mean with the live action Li- walking dead like i'm just saying as far as if we're talking zombies uh the walking dead worked heavily with prosthetics oh yeah yeah, yeah. i thought you were talking about the walking dead video game no 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 i'm, I'm just I would do. uh so so it says uh, and then it's just twitter users roasting it and uh the the litmus test that i use for this and then we'll get back to to nintendo is that jeremy johns made a video where he literally says i could he made it through two episodes and couldn't do anymore jeremy johns doesn't do like like um edgy content he, mm-hmm. he just makes reviews he likes stuff he doesn't like stuff if he can't finish it then it's bad then, you, then you think he gives everything like kind of a fair shake? Yes, I do, and, I, and he doesn't go for shock value or content that's made to upset people. He said th- this video, this movie, this show did what the internet thought was impossible. It <laughs> united all corners of the internet <laughs> in how horrible it is. It's also a, a really funny thing because the one thing that people seem to like about it is Lance Reddick. And from what I understand, he plays a character that's nothing like the character in the game. But he, Lance Reddick is such a good actor that he's the best part of something where he doesn't even seem like he's in the right place. Mm. So uh, it's, re- I, it's really, really funny. I so, don't doubt that there is a faction that is ready to be upset no matter what the product is. Yes. But also, you know, there's a, a faction producing these shows that hates video game. Yeah. 
audiences and they're going to create something that doesn't cater to what they're interested in. So here's my objection with like your previous statement that, you know, and I want to get back to Nintendo when you're done. Right. What that you like when you translate a game into a movie that like naturally, like you're going to lose some of it. A lot of games, sorry, I'm checking up on my work as I work. Okay. A lot of games, like literally, they're interactive movies where like the storytelling mm -hmm. part of it is central to it. And Uncharted is like the, I think, the most exemplary of, of these mm -hmm. examples. Well, look at me, how smart I am, repeating words. <laughs> But, and so you'd think that at least since the game is already very theatrical, that they stick to the plot points and like the highs and the lows that were within the game. I think like the, the objection that I'm seeing is that the games already have like a really good plot, but since the directors have such a contempt for the fans and the source material, yep. they, they literally want to scrap it all together. And their idea is like, well, now we're going to deify this by making it a movie, which is a higher art form than a video game. Yep. And that's why it comes off oh. negatively. They have, the same, well, I mean, they have the same opinion of comic books, right? Comic books as an art form is a beautifully done storytelling method, which a lot of directors and a lot of uh, actors look at as less than because it's not a book, because it's not uh, an original screenplay. So they look, they used to look, actually, I still think they all look down on it still. Uh, I but think so. But pretend to care for the sake of uh, being able to get future work. Well, Dane, you're saying that a lot of these video games are like incredibly based on storytelling they're yeah. more theatrical but then if it's so close to storytelling in a, f a film then why do we need to adapt it into film it's already so close to that that's a good question that I it, it's basically just an interactive film and i think that's something that people often complain about with video games yeah. if you're more into action and and reaching objectives you don't really care about storylines and you think you know that's more like a movie that yeah. you happen to you know click something every once in a while that changes the storyline slightly i think it's because like there's a demographic of people that they're so intimidated by the controller and the interface and they just see all these buttons and they see two joysticks and the d-pad and they're like there is no way I'm going to jump into this. But it's also, I mean, it's also like people still love to fantasy cast. Who would play this character? Who would play this character? That That's still something that's going to happen either way. Yeah, but the thing is, you know, uh, like Othello is a play. And still, typically, like the people that play the character Othello have read the play. But the thing is, like, try as try as we might, despite the fact that there's so many video game fans, they never get like a fan of the thing to direct it or star in it, which is like super concerning. Like every time like I, one of these movies come out, like basically the only positive thing is like I saw my nephew play it once yep. and it looked these and it's like, OK, well, give it a shot. Are you uh Reaching back to that one time we were talking about The Last of Us, uh, who said that? He like watched, literally watched his nephew playing um, The Last that of was, Us um, to get Pedro it. Pascal. Yeah, like to to get inspiration yeah. for which. His if character. you're busy and you don't have the time to watch, like, the least you can ask them to do is to watch game gameplay. But that's the same amount of time I'm sure any other that's actor would dedicate to method acting or, or, no, like or other ways to immerse themselves yeah. in the story and the yeah. character that they're playing. And right now in YouTube, like a super popular genre of videos is Let's Plays, mm -hmm. where people play the game and add their commentary to it. At the bare minimum, watch some of those. Yeah. Like you don't have to watch it from beginning to end. <sighs> Thank you. But let's say you're a character in, in some scene and they they are telling you, hey, this is a particularly impactful scene for the character, you know, look for that moment in the game. Because, like, what keeps happening is that, let's say if there's a character that's known to be solemn, and they just grow busters, like, hey, guys, Jill Valentine here, and I'm ready to show them with my gun. And it's like, dude, mm -hmm. you're in a zombie apocalypse. Your friends are dying, your family's dying and becoming zombies. Take that energy with you. It was like when The Walking Dead said we're not going to put any more straight relationships on screen. And I was like, it's 
They said, Literally yeah. the apocalypse. You have to have straight people. Otherwise, humanity will die out. But right. okay, whatever. I, I want to get back into what's going on with Nintendo. So it says they pl- uh, plan to acquire CG animation studio Dynamo Pictures with the intention to adapt more of its gaming media. Dynamo Pictures has helped create a variety of high quality productions, including the Studio Ghibli's Earwig, uh, Earwig and the Witch. Uh, and then we go down to also dealings in motion capture work and was involved in the production of Ghost in the Shell, Death Stranding, and the Resident Evil franchises. They, and by Resident Evil, I'm assuming they mean the Milianovich movies. No, the, I th- the, I'm thinking they're talking about the games because, like, the games have a lot of, you know, they, they get the people. Uh, the mo- okay, no motion capture. Yes, you're, yeah, right, yeah. you're right. Okay. So Nintendo's acquisition of the studio is expected to go through later this year. No doubt after the success of Nintendo IP adaptions like Detective Pikachu and hopes for success regarding the upcoming Chris Pratt Super Mario movie. I'm, I'm very... I... <laughs> Me to Super Mario with Chris Pratt is what Mary is to uh, the Barbie movie with uh, Ryan Gosling and, and Margot Robbie. How You're come? just fanboying about it. I'm just because I, I I think it's going to be hilarious in how I have no clue what they're. It's it was so funny. No Did he Luguzano. say like I'm not gonna be dressed as a plumber? I, I didn't. I just know that, that, that <laughs> there was there was worry about him being able to do the accent uh, of an Italian person, an Italian Mexican Japanese man. Yes. I mean, I like <laughs> uh, I like him because like he, he is like goofy and jovial. I think he mm-hmm. could pull it off. So I do too. <laughs> uh, so it says uh, it's a smart business choice too, since a lot of other gaming companies are adapting their gaming titles to other media as well. With the Last of Us TV show uh, on Netflix in the near future. So my question is, I'm thinking back to old Nintendo properties. What's something you would like to see adapted? Honestly, I, I'm. It's I'm not ca- also before. It's not Nintendo. I know this. So don't. Come at me. Are they ever going to make Metal Gear Solid live action? Man, that would be cool. And that would be like definitely one of those games that would merit uh, a movie. But I, I I feel like whoever they're getting to do Batman mm-hmm. and, and Batman movies, like they should, they should really get those people because Batman for some reason was like the only comic book character that for a while before the whole Marvel thing was like taken seriously. Yep. I think it's because of like the the darker tones in in the show. You, well, plus the every movie incorporated his parents' deaths into the backstory, which makes it harder to do campy when you're talking about a kid whose parents were murdered in front of him. Da 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 da. da. Right. da nobody wants to do that. Yeah. So. Right. Uh, so what is a property that you would like to see them adapt? From Nintendo? Star Fox. That, honestly, that's the one. Like, dual Turok bar- Dinosaur Hunter. I just want to see dual barrel roll. <laughs> uh, do- they could make a Donkey Kong movie if they, if they could. If they but can make, should they? if they can make Detective Detective Pikachu work, they can make Donkey Kong. I work. mean, honestly, the two things that come immediately to mind are Pokemon and Mario. Yeah, and like I think so. There's some positives in, in this story. So it's the studio that did motion capture for Ghost in the Shell, Death Stranding, and Resident Evil. So at these are, are they talking Ghost in the Shell movie or Ghost in the Shell game? I think I'm talking about the the show. The, okay, the end. Okay, yeah. It, that's my inference. I don't. They, they're being pretty vague about it, so I don't know. Yeah. But Death Stranding is like it's again like one of those games that's very theatrical, and Resident Evil meant. You know, my black pill with, with video game movies really started with Resident Evil. Because how hard is it? Everyone keeps saying it's, it should be the easiest possible the easiest. property to adapt, and they can't do it. It's like zombies, you know, like hot chicks with guns. I mean, and come to be on, fair, dude. the the Milianovich ones have like their core fan base that loves those movies. I mean, they're wrong, and <laughs> you know, may God bless their souls. It's kind of like the Underworld franchise. You know, it, but again, I keep, I keep telling you, it's like they ignore, they don't ignore, but they go past all the cool plot points and all the, like the edgy, you know, like scientific experiments and how it reflects upon like life and like the extents that people are willing to go and it ignores all that. And it, it always touches this like very superficially. And I think what the the video game movies suffer from is that they are, they tell, you know, in in my literature classes, they they taught us like, show, don't tell. Mm -hmm. And in these movies, it's like, tell, don't show. 
By the way, the, the original Tomb Raider is still a masterpiece, and I don't care what anyone says. The original Tomb, La Tomb Raider with Angelina Jolie is a, is a B-movie masterpiece wrapped in a, uh, a blockbuster skin, and everyone should go home. Quit, when we're done today, go watch the original Tomb Raider. You will have the time of your life, I promise you. Or are you just into Angelina Jolie? No, no, it's just a, it's an awesome movie. It's it's really oh. funny. It's got Angelina Jolie doing a British accent and Daniel Craig doing an American accent, <laughs> and they're both bad at it. Yeah, like Daniel Craig's American accent is only rivaled the the, the horribleness you. of his accent is only rivaled by her British accent, which is not quite as bad as his. So the, the thing that scares me about this is like, okay, so they acquire a studio that clearly knows how to do good work. Mm -hmm. Positive. The negative for me is that Nintendo hates their fans. Yes. Well, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. they, they, there's like a, a video game tournament that I've mentioned a couple times on this show. It's called Evolution World Championships. And it's basically the Super Bowl of fighting games. Mm -hmm. And within that uh, tournament, you get crowned as the world champion of your specific game. And one of the most popular games for the whole tournament was Super Smash Brothers Melee, which is a super old game. And originally, when it got announced for Evolution, Nintendo was like, nope, we're not doing it. We're suing you if you stream this because we don't want to promote that game, which is an old game. We want to promote like the new, the new ones or, I don't know, whatever kind of excuse they wanted to make, right? Animal Crossing. And literally... <laughs> And literally, <laughs> they got flagged on Twitter so hard for this that they made a PR nightmare and they allowed Melee at Evolution for like two to three years. And after that, they didn't allow it anymore. And so Nintendo's one of these companies where you get the fans can have all the fandom, all the emotional appeal in the world. They work so hard to promote their games, but... If they're not making a dime, they don't care. And my fear for this is that they're seeing Marvel and they're seeing, you know, like Marvel has like this like terrible like show on television. They I mean, a Ant Man gets a freaking movie, you know, like Yeah, but that lives on die and dies on Paul Rudd being just a very like likable dude. Yeah, but like who cares about Ant Man really? That's what I'm saying. Nobody, like, people care about Paul Rudd. Like, people like Paul Rudd. Right. But it's like, so they, they see, like, Marvel, like, churning money. And my fear is that they're like, this is it. This is how we keep churning money off of our fans. Did you watch the Mortal Kombat, the new Mortal Kombat movie? No, not the new one. Okay. I heard it was pretty cool. Uh, It was fine. And, and I, I still like the original. The original one was, like, pretty much the only cool, like, video game movie. For a long time. And, you know, the things that they do is, like, number one, they don't take themselves terribly seriously. Which, in a game like Mortal Kombat, which is this a, a little bit slapstick, it works. Yeah. Whereas in the in the Resident Evil movies, I think they insult the, the audience okay. way more. Like, in the Resident Evil movies, I think it's like, oh, guys... Is what's happening because Evil Company Umbrella unleashed like a evil virus? You don't say they released a virus that's infecting the people. Yes, they did release a virus heard, that's infecting people. I heard Raccoon City was really bad. The the one that came out this year in theaters. I'm sure. Last year in theaters. Like, I'm um, telling you, like, I cannot look at these things anymore. Like, that's what I'm not watching Sonic. I'm not watching anything. I think you should watch Sonic. No, please do. My I, sweet little heart can't take it anymore. I, I think, no, it's actually good. It's, it's, we swear. Yeah. Do you not trust our recommendation? I Sorry, mean, I did like Top Gun. Okay. Well, there you go. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, rolled. Interesting aside. But, yes, I've got a list here of, like, the 49 of, like, the uh, it's, like, the 49 best video game movies. And, oh, my like, God. Like, the That's 49th one is, like, one is like uh, oh, it's all 49 video game movies ranked by the tomato meter. Werewolves Within is the only one uh, in the 80s, which is an 86%. Uh, Angry Birds movie has 73%. Come on. Poke, uh, Detective Pikachu has a 68%. Sonic so 2 and Sonic 1 have uh, 69 and 63% respectively. Mortal Kombat has 54%. I would have given Mortal Kombat a little bit higher. Just uh, the new one, not the 2021 one, not the uh, 1995 version. Tomb Raider 2018, buh, buh. 
get rid of it. The only good thing about that was Walton Goggins. And then here's Mortal Kombat. So it goes through them. Uh, I think you need to give Sonic a chance. Of, so if there was another Nintendo property, uh, if there's one, because I just named the ones that I liked, uh, what else would you do? Also, they need to make Duke Nukem into a movie. Oh, man. You know, actually, the one, they'd have to take it seriously because the fan. So here's the thing about Nintendo. Like, the, th the three, like, huge video game companies are Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft right now. Like, they, they have, like, the, the big old consoles. What does Microsoft own? The Xbox. Oh. And Microsoft. And How did I not make that connection? <laughs> and by the way, like, uh, in other gaming news, PlayStation bought uh, Bungie that made the flagship game from Xbox that was called Halo. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, we've talked about it. I think you're it. forgetting something very important is Soldier Boy game consoles. Yes. Don't you yeah. remember Soldier Boy? They're kind of a, an industry leader, um, actually. Thank you for we that. We need to have him on the show someday. Oh, that would be oh, incredible. We Please him have and Chet Hanks in a super show. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'll just be in the beanbag. <laughs> um, so uh, the thing about so Nintendo fans are rabid. They are rabid. Like, they'll buy... They'll, they are, like... Equivalent to Star Wars, where they'll buy any slop they put they in their don't freaking care. face. Wow! Well, like, thank you. Oh my I, god, another. I kind of have the perception that it's like Chad, old Nintendo, and like Virgin, new Nintendo. No, they're all. I think they're all like dweebs. <laughs> but I, mean, I mean, like the franchise itself. Maybe yeah. Okay. The franchise itself, like, definitely. Because now there's like, like people soy facing with a Nintendo Switch versus like. The Chad with his Game Boy Color. Basically. I mean, they're just <laughs> so defensive about everything, every IP Nintendo. And it's like this company, out of all of them, deserves none of your affection. Like, I, besides Electronic Arts, none I've never seen a, a, like a company nobody hate likes their fans more. Nobody likes Electronic Arts, though. No, nobody. But like, well, I liked A Way Out. That's a good game. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. It was like a, a game about a couple of prisoners breaking out of prison, and then it's like it's like story based. I mean, most people think of electronic arts; they think of like Madden and stuff. Right? Yeah, that's what I yeah. think. Yeah, but they have some good stuff. So, I mean, I think if they so oh, the, the, what I was gonna I say. One, I want you to give me one property. Zelda. Okay. That would be incredible. But the the weird thing is. Link, the protagonist, never speaks. Mm -hmm. And it's done intentionally because the point is that you're supposed to identify with him. And, like, that's why he doesn't speak. Well, they're big on identifying with people now. So that's. <laughs> he is a representation. He is a. Uh, yes. I mean, I'm sure. But more in, like, the true sense of the word. What if one day they do a thing where, like, you just can put on glasses at the movies and it just becomes whatever you want it to be? That way everyone's re represented all the time. Like, if you want Zelda to be a white guy, uh, a white girl, uh, a black guy, black girl, if you want it to be no, no, a no, dog. Those, those first two options are not allowed, Brad. Yeah, okay. what it, like, and you just put on the, v, the, gog, the goggles, and it's just wh whoever's acting just becomes. Because I watched a thing the other day where it turned. It said, would, um, who was the actor? Oh, my gosh. It was uh, Christian Bale. It was like, would Christian Bale still be famous if he was a girl? Would Christian Bale, and it, and it literally, uh, it, it's like somebody does a Photoshop morph of like Christian Bale if he was black, Christian Bale if he was Hispanic, Christian Bale if he was a woman, Christian Bale, and just kind of like adjust his facial features. Uh, I was like, what if they just did that? They have the actor, whoever plays them, and then they morph them. Or it can morph the yeah. actor into you. you. Yes. That's where we're headed. That's with a Black Mirror episode. No algorithm can handle my chattiness. <laughs> you know, my, actually my biggest desire, like for me, my dream job would be to work in the theatrical production of Final Fantasy VI and have it be like a four-way movie. And I think Christian... Four-part movie? Four-part mo four mm. movie. That's a different <laughs> movie. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. That's very even I better. Think, I think I clicked on the... I think I downloaded the wrong <laughs> Final <laughs> Fantasy. Yes. Let's bring oh, up the maturity in the okay, room, okay. please. <laughs> no, but uh, because the reason why I say this is because I think Christian Bale would be the perfect guy to play the villain. Okay. Who's like an insane, literally an insane clown general. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. And, but like, I think that's what it's going to take. I think it's going to take like actor. And by the way, he was in the last Thor movie and he was a great villain. 
So like it really takes people. But he like, didn't. He does. He doesn't read Marvel comics and knew nothing about Marvel movies. He said it in an interview. Goes. I think I saw the one. Yeah, with the and big that's kind of guy. committing the same sin that you're talking about. Maybe since I haven't read Thor comics, that's why I thought he was good. Well, but you're biased. Maybe yeah. yeah. But like with <laughs> I'm calling you out. Okay, well called out. But like with <laughs> Kefka, which is the the villain of this movie, like I I, I don't think. He has to play the game as much as understand the like the character is like truly like insane. Okay. And like he just really has to go there and sink deep. Oh, and, and like last thing when we were talking about Zelda, so I think that would be, if done correctly, that would be the perfect movie. And a funny thing is like IGN way back in the day did a April Fool's joke mm-hmm. where they did a trailer for a live action Zelda movie and it was incredible. It was literally incredible. People were like, oh, my God, this is so good. Finally, someone's going to do it right. And That then was it, never followed through. No, it was a joke. It was an April Fool's joke. Oh. So that was like the most ironic thing of all. The most Wasn't there hot- also like a that fake seems- trailer like with Mads Mikkelsen is in The Witcher or something like that? I could be imagining that. I don't remember that. Okay. But the thing is like that's the funniest thing of all. An April Fool's joke was the most – the coolest – Live action adaptation we've ever had, like the Aaron Paul fake trailer for Weird Al Yankovic for a Weird Al Yankovic biopic right. that well, cracked <laughs> that that they made in like ninety or in like the early two thousands. They should I just get you can, you can make sixty seconds and not yeah. two hours of something that's actually good. I mean, if they treated those sixty seconds with the same love across the two hours, they really have something. Yeah, but they won't. Yep. And the t- what were you saying that, about Chet Hanks? They should get just get Chet Hanks as the protagonist, Cardi B <laughs> as, the, as the female lead. Um, Chet Hanks as Solid Snake. I'm not sure about Cardi B. Dude. Yeah, dude. We've got a movie. We've got it. Uh, let's do the super chats okay. before we get this. Uh, Nye Mechworks said, send you an email Friday about my giant robots and power armor. You can find them at YouTube via my name. I plan to use them to create culture and have fun. That is what it's all about is creating culture and having fun. Because that's, I, I was talking to someone this weekend. They asked a, a question about the show. Um, and they said, like, uh, does it ever get draining? to? Because I, I complain a lot sometimes. Like, I'm like, I, I, I make faces and I say, oh, these people <laughs> when talking about celebrities. But I think there's still, it's, it's not just about that. It's about, like, hanging out with the people who come to watch uh, and being able to kind of entertain. Like, a lot of my favorite things are podcasts. Uh, you less podcasts and more like YouTubers who have like good followings that do really good individual videos and that's creating culture in its own right and it's like uh, with the internet being what it is today I think there's something to be said about giving people something to watch that isn't uh, uh, the same studio that's producing Ricky Martin movies uh, or, or <laughs> stuff like this you know what I mean so it's uh, it is all about cu- yeah. creating culture I, I'm just surprised that he sent an email to pop culture crisis I, at timcast.com yeah. we'll have to have to check that. Sorry, I, I shouted it out again. Oops. Um, Hobbit said, you need a good video game adaptation? Halo. I think I just threw up on my phone. As you oh, should. Oh, man. I mean, yeah, if you want to see Master Chief Buns, which everybody, nobody in the world asked for, was that you who's like, I looked up Pablo Schreiber, and he's a good looking, was that you or was that somebody else? I, I looked up Ricky Martin. No, no, <laughs> we were talking about Halo. He is good looking. Oh, I don't remember. Yeah, uh, somebody was like, "I oh, looked up publisher." I'm like, "The point is, you shouldn't know what he looks like. That's the point." Yeah, they they <laughs> went like completely jumped the shark. It's like they they were like, "Oh, he lost his virginity." Nobody too. wants like, to. Nobody wants Master Chief Who sex. Cares? Nobody. <laughs> uh, Saint Winston said, "Our E show makes Resident Evil. Resident Evil show makes cultural references that were dated at release." Wesker is discount blade and a family man. The show is fifty percent Riverdale, fifty percent Walking Dead. That's the worst possible thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Nobody wants that. By the way, that's the critique I heard as well. It, it's like a teeny bopper drama. Yeah, and it's like how, how that I, I can't even fathom. I mean, it. I heard good things about Riverdale just because it's like kind of self-aware and how awful it is. Whereas what this sounds Evil like should, is like completely yeah. buying its own bullshit. There's like no teens in the games that I know of. So yeah. like, I, like I don't know how that would even infiltrate that. 
climate change. They want to relate to the audience. See what they need to do if the if the climate change people want to sneak that stuff into these projects and not annoy me. They need to bring back the term global warming as like a throwback. Dude, I was really enjoying the Batman movie in the airplane, and then Catwoman goes like, "Oh, these white privilege!" Oh, it like yeah. took me back. T- t- oh my god, t- that was uh, that was like the biggest the 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 social justice elements of that movie are actually really really deftly handled almost the whole way through. That was the only one really. until you get to that. Uh, I until you get that, to that part that I saw people talking about that comment and saying that it was actually uh, more so making us sympathize with Batman in that situation could be because you see that he's not the one dimensional like you know yeah cis het straight white male that I, she I, is talking about it's the language I hate Fra- you can phrase that any number of ways that I understand have to be I just so think it's maybe framing the language in a bad way more than it's framing him in a bad way by the way in, in the nature of a feminist she's like talking mess about like all the typical guys and then falls in love with exactly <laughs> what she hates right I thought it was supposed to be pointing that out yeah. right I mean in a it, self-aware way no I don't think I don't think she knows self-aware. Oh, okay. Because some I just saw some people saying that was based, like yeah. secretly based. It, um, there is no secretly based in Hollywood. It's, they're not that smart. They're not. Okay, <laughs> except for Chris Pratt. Uh, even he's not. No, he's secretly not. based. He's just he's just a decent dude. There's yeah. just a lot of people who want to think who, that. He just yeah. prays. No, I, I it's it's not even that. Like I don't think I just think he's like a decent dude who got targeted by a bunch of people, uh, and then just like like I got some people that were annoyed that we called out the the wishy-washiness of the of his comments but it's like i get it like i i know that bothered you a lot him not well yeah, yeah. and and that's exactly the audience who thinks he's secretly based yeah exactly <laughs> uh slavki nikki said nintendo should take the kojima is that the right pronunciation yes. yeah. route there are complaints of no diversity characters in my games not true you the player are gay. <laughs> perfect <laughs> haha that is genius hobbit said amazon is making a fallout show expecting failure <laughs> telling from someone named hobbit uh, <laughs> you guys know okay. about fallout G- given given um the fact that uh amazon's also doing the rings of power probably not the greatest idea but at the same time they did reacher they did the Terminalist, both of which I really enjoyed. I don't know what their track record is with video game adaptations or if they have done any video game adaptations at Amazon, but um, better them, I guess, than... uh, Actually, no. I scratch it. I don't believe better them. Anything with (laughs) cultural relevance gets ruined. The reason that the Terminalist survived, the reason that Reacher did well is because uh, the the people, when, when I talk about wokeness and i hate that term uh they don't see cultural relevance in those properties right Mm -hmm. but they see cultural relevance in fallout they see cultural relevance in uh any of these video game franchises so they're going to be the first to be injected with those uh layers of identity politics do you guys know what fallout is yes yeah so like i think that that game is a is again like resident evil another one of those that like should have a chance because that one it's like it's a nuclear fallout you know, that's what happens. Mm-hmm. And if you stray away from, like, you know, the nuclear war is really hurting the Tinkses the most. Like, if, if they really, like, take that away, which, I mean, I'm hoping they will. It's, I mean, they have the, all the potential to make a good movie. Um, I, If they're saying Amazon, it's probably going to be a TV show. Well, even better. Uh, because, like, I think The Witcher... What was a pretty good. That's a, that's another example, but yeah. but The Witcher is also a book series, not just a video game. And this guy's a gamer. Yes, Henry Cavill is very. Yeah. They said that he was like the encyclopedia for the franchise while on set. That's awesome. Maybe the studio's just cheap. They don't want to hire like a. <laughs> I don't expect good things from Rings of Power. Nobody does. Uh. All right. Uh, Unavailable ID name said, "I would rather play Detroit Become Human than watch anything on TV right now." I don't blame. I don't blame him. I'm. I, I'm waiting on my, a delivery of all my vintage video game stuff, so I can just go back <laughs> to playing um, uh, old school Nintendo, old school N64. Been talking and about it for a while. Sega. Well, I, I don't expect it to get here. My, <laughs> my dad's gonna mail it out to me. <laughs> Blue Heart said, "I know they've tried before, but Fire Emblem needs to be a series." Dane, I mean, I, I never played that game, but I know that everyone that plays it loves it. So. Listen to the fans. Mm. Thanks for watching this clip, guys. If you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media, links are in the description below. Bye. Bye.